If you dread any of your training days, I would say you're probably not doing it correctly. It's not filling. Just my luck. Having a good workout too. Tube's not holding air. Today we are uh, doing a full day of Ironman training. So we're gonna start off with a uh, pretty like threshold kind of swim. A lot of threshold swim and still, still trying to work in that takeout speed a bit, but definitely also realizing that the Ironman is quite a long way. And we need to be able to sustain pace at uh, not too taxing of an effort. And so today is an Iron Man kind of swim. long you know I mean, it's it's only it's only may you know like we're trying to peak well obviously we got this iron man we got to do decent in right but a kona is the is the thing that's like still a long way away you don't want to uh now is the time to be relax a little bit and, and actually ingrain some good habits so you got enough time right now you know yeah i think it's important um we're learning a lot of things as we said in the run workout video about the heat. Um, so we, we have that kind of training aspect to deal with here. It's already about 90 degrees right now, it's 11.30. So from an Ironman standpoint, especially on a weaker end of the swimming, it really, and if you've never done a test of this, swim a hard 4,000 and then get, first, first do like a, a bike ride at let's say whatever your threshold is, Find out what your heart rate is. Then do it fresh. Then, a couple days later, come to the pool and swim 4,000 meters. And then do the same workout and you will see that your heart rate is probably five to 10 beats per minute higher. Just purely from the swim, from the fatigue and the muscle of the swim. And so I think it's important as a weaker swimmer, that's a lot of us, I think, scratch our heads because you know, we feel such a way in practice, and then in the races, we don't feel like nearly as good as we were, if we were like, just if we could just do what we we're doing in practice. Um, and definitely the taxation of the swim has an, you know, plays a role in that. So I think it's important, you know, particularly on like a bike workout day where your heart rate is going to be elevated to, you know, fair amount of the time, get, get the, you know, quite close to the full distance of swimming in so that at least you have that pre-fatigue and it doesn't really cost you much, you know what I mean, in terms of like risk or anything like that. It just elevates your heart rate and makes it a little bit perceived exertion wise harder. So that's why we do this, do something more threshold type before the bike workout because I want my heart rate to be five to 10 beats higher so that I feel what it feels like to push that power in a race and what it will feel like internally for me so that I can deal with that better.
see. I've been riding the bike for a long time, but I honestly feel like I discovered something today. Oh boy. Yeah, like a, not fidgeting. Like if you just plant your groin down on the saddle and you say, don't fidget for like two minutes, please don't fidget. How much more power you get, like, actually pretty incredible. I don't know if it's just some tricking the power meter or if it's, if it's just a more constant application of power, but I normally fidget once every 10 seconds or so, right? So like constantly fidgeting, fidgeting, fidgeting. But anyways, once I discovered that, it was like I was struggling, struggling to push 320. And then the second hour, I pushed like 325. What was the workout? It was two times an hour, except it was so effing hot. I was like, I, I gotta just take a break for a second. So I gave myself three minutes recovery after 45 minutes. I did one hour straight. Then I had to just come home and get three bottles. And then, uh, and then I did 45 minutes straight. And I was just like, just give me one second, please. Cause it's so effing hot. So I took three minutes and then I did 15 more minutes at 328. But the average temperature was hot. I can tell you that it was very hot. Average temp, 93, Whew. 245, two hours, 45 minutes. I don't know, we'll see, we'll see, I mean, that's more power than I averaged in St. George and my heart rate's like 125 and it's 93 degrees out. We'll see. I feel like I'm getting pretty fit. I don't know. That was a discovery though. Undoubtedly. Well done. I don't know if I'm cheating the power meter or what. Like, what do you think it is? Do you think it's just a better application of power? Or am I cheating the power meter? I mean, I don't think like my average speed's the fastest that I've done on that course. And I wasn't like, I was like out of the teeth. Like I wasn't like, I mean, I was slowing down in the corner, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. so oh, whatever. Where are we at on the day? Final little easy run. Just uh, took yesterday off running. I don't like to take two days off in a row unless it's whatever recovery period. So just 30 minutes easy, we'll go off heart rate. Paces are absolutely irrelevant on this treadmill. I use a foot pod. They're so stupidly off, I can't even like wrap my head around it. But um, So I just go by heart rate and I've already done about three hours and 40 minutes of training today. So I'll target around 110 to 115, which is nice, easy aerobic heart rate for me. Anything you learned today? How's your day been? It's been a great day, actually. It's been a tough day. I'm still, I don't know if I'm ever gonna adapt to the heat here, but uh, I did learn that if I stay in the static position on the saddle, i.e. don't fidget, 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 which I normally do, I, can, I feel like I can produce more power, which I did do. I should prove that in my bike workout. So it'll be interesting actually to work on that and see if long term that's actually um, like a performance gain. dread any of your training days, I would say you're probably not doing it correctly. Uh, this should be probably pretty fun most of the time. Don't get me wrong, it's effing hot outside. But when I'm out there, I'm like, this is fun. If it's not fun, then you're probably doing something wrong. So no, the whole thing was fun. I enjoyed that. Could have kept uh, going. And that's how most of your workouts should be. You should feel like you could have kept going. What about on days that you're uh, struggling with motivation? On days when you're struggling with motivation, you just go and look at Jan Ferdinand's Instagram. 
yeah, good consistent training. I'm getting the itch. I'm starting to get the itch for sure. I feel like, um, I feel like I, I, I mean, I, got, I, I don't want to talk, you know what I mean? I have to talk because I do this fucking YouTube shit, but um, I, I feel like I'm getting a handle on this, you know? It, uh, it just doesn't make sense that I could be so consistent at 70.3s, but so inconsistent at Ironmans other than something that I'm doing. Not because I'm not. Like, I've had good Ironmans. So, I feel like I'm uh, finally getting a, a sense of how to train properly for this stuff. And, it's, and the reason it's been so difficult, I think, is because I've muscled this stuff for so long trying to do it through you know, working myself to death and kind of the nice part I believe is that you actually are overworking. You don't have to work yourself to death. It should be fun. It should be enjoyable. And so we'll see. I mean, I'm, I could be full of shit, right? And we go to Lake Placid and I get, or whatever. Why do I keep saying Lake Placid? <laughs> Cordelin. And I could get last place like Cam Worf, you know? But, uh, Hopefully, hopefully I can do better than that, you know? Hopefully this stuff is uh, true. What would you say to your competitors at Coeur d'Alene right now? Uh, nothing, man. This is like, this is, uh, for the most part, it's a race against yourself. You, you beat yourself uh, oftentimes in, in the Ironman, I think, as far as I can tell.